Hello everyone, Hyper here. Today's video will be the patch 9.1 on Holy DK Guide. I know this video should have come out about two months ago, but as a lot of you know, I was playing Retribution Paladin for progression, and it took me a little bit to catch this character back up um, for it to be in working order to do Mythic on. I got most of the Mythic items I need and finally feel comfortable enough playing this spec again to provide you with all the necessary info to take uh, Unholy DK into Mythic Raiding. So in this video, I will try to cover all the necessary information that you need to have to perform well on the Unholy DK. So first up, let's talk about talents. Luckily, the talents are pretty much the same as they were in CN. You will take all will serve on pretty much all bosses that are single target and you have good uptime. It's still a really good talent. Um, the only time you swap off of all will serve is when a fight A has large portions where you need to be out of range of the boss. Nerzul's a good example for this. If you're not death advancing every knockback, you'll have portions of the fight where you're out of range for quite a bit. Um, and Clawing Shadows can make up a pretty nice amount of damage there. Or B, on fights where you drop DND and Cleave. So Soul Render, Dormazane, probably the best example. Fate Scribe, also a pretty good example for actually both of those conditions. Um, Clawing Shadows can be great in scenarios like that where you have to Cleave or you find yourself away from your target for extended periods of time. Um, then in Tier 2, we always take on Holy Blight. Tier 3 doesn't really matter. There is not great use for any of these talents in the raid. Asphyx can help you like stun adds on KT. Um, Death's Reach can be sometimes useful, but not really. Uh, Grip of the Dead, again, on KT is somewhat useful. Um, same on Soul Render. But yeah, not, not much else going on. Then going down to tier 4, Soul Reaper will be the go-to choice on every single boss except for Sylvanas. On Sylvanas, you will want to swap over to Pestilent Postules, and this is just because Sylvanas never goes into an Execute window, so you never make use of Soul Reaper. Um, this is more important on Mythic than on Heroic. On Heroic, you can make an argument for Soul Reaper because of Phase 2, but on Mythic, definitely just play Pestilent Postules because boss damage is what matters. Um, then moving on to the next talent row, Spell Eater should be your default pick on Progression, and if you find yourself needing extra mobility, that's when you can swap over to Wraithwalk. Um, and also for farm, Wraithwalk is pretty good once you have more gear and you have an easy time surviving bosses. Then on Holy Pack, default choice, you always take it. And in the last tier, Army of the Damned, always take it no matter what. So those are pretty much the talents. Like I said, they haven't really changed from Castle Nathria. So moving on to the Covenants, Necrolord is still the best. Um, nothing's changed there. However, now we do have a bit of a shift in the Soulbinds that you want to play. So our choice right now for Soulbinds is between Plague Divisor Merlith and Bonesmith Hymir. Amani has kind of fallen out of favor um, for a few different reasons, but Merlith and Hymir are the go-to options. So for single target bosses, when you're playing Deadliest Coil Legendary, always play Merlith. Um, this will allow you to have permanent mastery from the from casting Fleshcraft. And also whenever you press your A-bomb limb, your target will take 6% increased damage for 40 seconds, which is great um, with syncing up with like army and the rest of your cooldowns. So for single target and even like limited cleave, Merilith is your best option. For conduits, we still play the same, so you play Eternal Hunger and Convocation of the Dead. These are the two important ones that you should have. For Merilith, since we have a third option for potency, um, I just chose to take the Adaptive Armor Fragment, which is a small damage boost. Um, there are a few other options that you can take, such as Embrace Death. It will kind of come down to what's your highest eye level third conduit that you can take. But generally, Adaptive Armor Fragment, you can get it out of the raid at a high eye level, and it's pretty decent. Now, for Bonesmith Hymir, his role or her role is a little bit more niche um, in that you want to take this trait on fights where you do cleave damage. So Soul Render Dormazane, great example. Especially if you're playing with the Frenzy Monstrosity Legendary, having your burst windows line up with, like, 
extra crit can be extremely powerful. And while on single target it does fall slightly behind, it's still not a terrible option to take. Um, with Marilith, you only get, or with a high mirror, excuse me, you only get two potency slots, so just take Eternal Hunger and Convocation of the Dead. Alright, next for gearing, let's go over all the items that you should have or look at getting. Um, first of all, the Legendary. You want to have Deadliest Coil, that's going to be the Legendary that you play in 90% of cases. On progression, arguably, you can play Deadliest Coil on every single boss fight. Once you get to farm and you're trying to pad your numbers a little bit, that's when you can move over to Frenzied Monstrosity. Um, it's going to give you a lot more cleave damage and AoE damage, but lose you a tiny bit of boss damage. Um, for your Domination Sockets, you want the Unholy Bonus, so you want to have the Helm and three Unholy uh, Shards. And then the other two slots, just put the Damaging Shard from the other two in. So for your Blood, it should be the Shard of Beck, and for the Frost one, it should be the Shard of Core. Um, I'm still missing one of them because I'm missing a Domination slot, um, but that, those are kind of the Shards that you want. So Unholy Set, and then the two damaging ones from the off pieces. For your weapon, Jathus is extremely strong, and if you can get it, absolutely use it. Um, by far the best weapon that we can get. Now, for your trinkets, you will have a couple options, but unfortunately our choices are not too vast, so you have to look at getting a few of the trinkets. Um, you want to use a passive trinket that gives you stats, and an unused trinket that you use with your cooldowns. So for the passive trinkets, you pretty much have two options. First one is the old warrior soul that drops from Sylvanas. And the second option is the titanic ocular gland that drops from the eye of the jailer. So those are kind of the two passive trinkets that you can use. Now for on use or active trinkets, you have to go to mythic plus. The first choice is IQD. If you can get it a high, at a high eye level, form it out of the other side. It is an extremely strong trinket. Uh, its downside is that on progression, especially sometimes uses that are like second or third use of the trinket, you are far more likely to give your healer's mana or heal someone um, or something along those lines instead of actually getting stats from it. So you have to be a little bit careful and play around that. But if you manage to always get stats off of your IQD, it's by far the strongest trinket we can get. So especially for farm, it is the best choice that you can get hands down. Now the other option is what I have equipped here is the Overwhelming Power Crystal. It is not as strong as IQD, but it lines up very nicely with your cooldowns and it will give you a much more consistent amount of um, stats and damage throughout the fight versus IQD, which is like either very powerful or absolutely useless. So Overwhelming Power Crystal, a little bit more consistent but generally a little bit weaker than IQD. Stat-wise, nothing's changed. You want a ton of mastery, a ton of haste, um, and middle ground crit. Um, versatility doesn't really matter too much. Keep in mind that item level will almost always be better than trying to go for specific stats. Um, even if your stats are all out of whack, equipping your highest eye level gear will usually result in better DPS than trying to min-max your secondaries. But if you can, always choose Mastery and Haste um, over the other stats. Crit has gained some value, um, but just keep that in mind. Next, let's talk about the rotation and the gameplay. Fortunately enough for us, it hasn't really changed from CN. Um, it's either a good thing or a bad thing, depending on how you look at it. There are a few things that have been added, such as if you are using Plague Divisor Marilith, then you want to use Fleshcraft on cooldown. You don't have to get a full channel, but you have to get at least one tick of it to get the mastery buff. So pre-pull, about five to six seconds before the pull happens, you want to start channeling Fleshcraft just to make sure that for the first two minutes of the fight, you don't have to worry about this. And then again, once your A-bomb limb is starting to come off cooldown, that's when you will have to recast your Fleshcraft. And you only have to really do it for a single global uh, to get the benefit of the mastery buff. Now, uh, Besides that, the other thing that's changed is that Convocation of the Dead is now at a high enough item level that your Dark Transformation, Unholy Blight, and Apocalypse should always be synced together. Um, the only part where this is not true is once you enter execute 
your apocalypse will get pushed further and further and further from your unholy blight dark transformation just because you're spending runes on soul reaper instead of uh, popping wounds on your target but besides that everything is the same as castle nathria so your opener will look something like this you will army then do two fester strikes the order doesn't exactly matter then you unholy blight dark transformation a bomb limb trinket uh, apocalypse and then just build and spend build and spend Make sure that you're not wasting resources. That's what the opener is all about. Make sure that you're not overcapping runes, not overcapping runic power. It will be a little bit more difficult during Bloodlust because you have a ton more haste. Um, but for example, if you're using the old warrior, the old warrior soul trinket, your opener will be slowed down enough because you're you don't have all that extra haste from the trinket until like your second. Um, set of cooldowns but if you're bloodlusting late on a fight for example you will definitely be struggling with having too many resources uh, to keep up so then once your cooldowns start coming up you want to just pop them um i did a bad job there at overcapping runes but that's because i was talking um but as you can see the rotation hasn't really changed you just build spend build spend then every 45 seconds pretty much on the dot if you have a 252 conduit uh, of convocation, you can pop your Unholy Blight, Dark Transformation, and Apocalypse. So one thing that I do want to mention is how do you use your second and third A-bomb limb? Well, that's kind of a good question because it will depend on fight timing. For example, if a fight lasts 4 minutes and 30 seconds, then you want to slam your A-bomb limb on a cooldown regardless of Unholy Blight and their transformation being up. Uh, even if you have 20 seconds, 30 seconds left on them and your, your A-bomb limb comes off cooldown, slam it. But if the fight lasts, let's say, 5 minutes, 5 minutes, 30 seconds, then you should definitely delay your A-bomb limb and sync it up with your Unholy Blight dark transformation. That is... Essentially, you just don't want to lose a use of a bomb limb. That's what is the most important. So sync a bomb limb with unholy blight dark transformation if you can. If you cannot, then just slam it on cooldown or as close to on cooldown as you can, um, without losing a full use of it. Now, the last thing about the single target rotation is, of course, when you get to execute, you just want to slam Soul Reaper every single time it's up. Make sure you have a weak aura that screams at you, flashes, spins, bounces, whatever you need to do. Make sure you have something that tells you you should be using Soul Reaper. As soon as the target is below 35% health, Soul Reaper is one of the highest priority buttons that you should be pressing. So that is pretty much how the rotation goes for single target. For AoE, it doesn't really change much. Uh, the first thing you will want to do, since there are no bosses that are just like pure AoE besides like, you know, padding on KT, uh, you just want to drop DND and spam your Scourge Strikes for AoE. Um, obviously, if you can, line up your Unholy or your Unholy Blight with Dark Transformation. Um, on fights like Soul Render, they will line up pretty nicely. Same on Face Scribe. But if you can't, then just drop your DND and spam out as many Clawing Shadows as you can, because for fights like that, you should be running Clawing Shadows. And then for mass AoE, Epidemic is your best friend. So on KT, for example, all those little devoted, devoted adds that fixate people, you can just outbreak and Epidemic spam. And once you're out of Runic Power, that's when you prioritize dropping DND and cleaving. Um, so essentially, the more targets you have, the more useful Epidemic is. The fewer targets you have that you're cleaving, the more useful DND uh, paired with Scourge Strike or Clawing Shadows is. If you have any questions about the nuances of the rotation, any specific questions about stats, gearing, um, specific boss advice, anything like that, let me know in the comment section below or join my Discord. I am more than happy to help all of you out. And if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.